Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. Those words from Psalm 130 echo deeply in the wells of our soul. We don't usually wait very well. Oh, how often we cry out to God and then wait for God to answer. Waiting is so hard. Perhaps it's because we ourselves have delayed asking God for help until the very end. But when we do, we look for God to respond in our time, right away. In other words, we finally get around to praying for help, and then we expect an immediate answer, as if we expect to say jump and God to say how high. We need to remember that we aren't in control, and God doesn't dance to our tune. It's hard to wait. This week we have entered Advent, a period of waiting, a period of anticipation and looking for God to act. So this week we want to look together at some Bible characters who waited. Sometimes, like us, they must have been frustrated. Sometimes, like us, they took matters into their own hands. Sometimes, like we try to do, like the psalmist urged us, as we wait, in God's word we hope. Noah certainly did. I think that's something we don't often think about. You know that Noah was on that ark while it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. However, most biblical scholars nowadays think that number wasn't an exact number and rather that it meant as long as it took. So it rained as long as it took to flood the whole earth. As I said, we don't know exactly how long that was, but I suspect it was a long, long time. And then there's another number, 150, which was how many days it took for the waters to recede and for the mountaintops to begin to appear. And then it says that Noah waited another 40 days, another time as long as it took, and then sent forth a raven to see if there was dry land. Now, once again, here's the thing. This is a long time. Imagine being on that ark with all that rain and nothing but water to see. I think it would be easy to lose hope. And imagine waiting for the waters to recede. Again, it would be easy to feel forgotten and then imagine waiting for more and waiting some more and sending out a bird to find land and the bird returns without finding any. It would e be easy to feel forsaken. Sometimes that might be how we feel. Certainly we felt that way during the height of the pandemic. The virus seemed to linger among us, and we grew weary of being careful, of face masks, of closures, of social distancing, of isolation. Perhaps most of all, we certainly grew weary of not knowing when all this would come to an end. It was our own 40 days and 40 nights of a flood, and there was no safe harbor in sight. How long, O oh Lord, we cry. And that's just one example. We cry out to God about many things that trouble our lives and seem to linger and linger. We wait and not always patiently. When will God deliver? And perhaps one answer is as long as it takes. Our troubles will be here as long as it is here. And perhaps we are called in the midst of it all to look for and to find God with us. To look for and find God redeeming the world. To look for and find the God who saves. 
There's one more answer found in Genesis 8. The very first verse says, But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and all the domestic animals that were with him in the ark. God remembered Noah and all the animals of all kinds. And just so, in the midst of our weariness, in the face of our hopelessness, when we feel forsaken, when we feel forgotten, the message of Noah's 40 days and 40 nights is also the promise to us. God remembered. God remembers us and will be with us. God is our stronghold and God has a strong hold on us. We've entered Advent waiting. Our Savior comes. Thanks for watching and remember to let this day belong to God.